Hello, people. Welcome to the 359th day making Songbringer. And uh, today I'm working on uh, more buttons. <clears throat> it's been a huge weekend. What's up, Lime Studios? How's it been, man? It's going good, dude. The game is, is better than it's ever been. Um, <clears throat> what's up, T? Yeah, it's good to see you guys. I've had a long ass weekend. I had t I pulled two all nighters this weekend, getting uh, getting Songbringer updated. There was one update I made on Friday, and then I made another one on Sunday, and uh, just got like, like a lot of critical things finished in the game that really make it better for the for new players, people that are just experiencing it for the first time. What's up, the gaming artist? Yeah, sorry about that, T. Like I said, I pulled an all-nighter like on Sunday, getting the the latest version out, and uh, there's just no chance I I could stream yesterday. It was super bleary-eyed still. I'll be working on making it so you can use more buttons. Finally, this will be cool. <clears throat> Progress is better than the stream, kind of. Cool. Yeah, this game's got to get done, right? This game's got to get done. It's getting there. It's getting really close. It's, especially this this latest update. I realize how much has actually improved. A lot has improved. And uh, I'm not going to really go into showing that exactly right now on the stream, but... Oh man, I don't have a single USB port I can plug this into right now. Man. But uh, yeah, there's so many new story elements to the game. Um, when you're running around, let's see, like I'll, let me show you guys a couple of story elements. These are really important things for, the, for new players. People that are totally new to Songbringer, you don't have any clue what's going on. Um... Yeah, you're working on a huge feature too? <laughs> oh yeah, what's up Zilton? Are you the Kool-Aid man? Like here, I'll turn off um, Home Zero. I just know, let's go to Let's turn off these bombable dialogues. I'll show you guys what some of these dialogues are here in the game. <laughs> it was so young. Yeah, I know, right? Once the game's finally finished. No one can see the fourth wall anyways, that's right! But you just broke it! Huh, I'm looking for some bomb of pillars so I can show you guys what's new. Wanna hear my song? You wrote a song? Cool. Undertale broke the fourth wall already. You, you're sort of working on a game. Nice, Zilton. Mm. 
So I don't, I don't think he did it. What's up? Yeah, I didn't do anything. Even playing the right save game? It's a Xanadu. I don't have. This should be Xanadu. Zero. Doesn't have bombable. I have bombs. I don't get it. Why well, I, I want to show you guys this new stuff, but it's it's not working for me. Oh, thanks, gaming artist. <laughs> uh. I think I might have found another bug. You might be going to E3? Sweet, man. Yeah, cellular automa automation for sure. Automata. How do you say that? How do you pronounce that word? So I'm turning on a couple debug alerts to show what story elements are running because I can't figure out why this story is not showing. It's supposed to run this, this bombable pillar dialogue as soon as you get near these pillars. It's still nothing. That's not a story element. What the hell did the did the whole story system just break? What if I start at zero? T 
Take away this home. Take away the sword. Oh, man. Yeah, nothing. The whole story system broke. Ah, oh, screw it. I don't want to work on that right now. I wanted to make more buttons. I'm ignoring the bugs. I'm ignoring the bugs. I don't know what happened. I released the code. Everything was working great. I released it to Steam on Sunday night. I was bleary eyed, staying up till what eight eight a.m. I think I was up till eight a.m. getting that release finished. I must have done something weird after that and broke the game. So the story system doesn't work. <clears throat> I'll figure it out later though. I'm gonna do some simple stuff. I gotta do simple things. Staying up all night, pulling all nighters is not good for your long term of your project. It's good in the short term. Yeah, you can get something done. You get a lot done in pulling an all nighter. This goes for crunch time in general. <clears throat> you put yourself in a crunch time mentality, and sure, you may get some things done, but you're gonna ignore other things. Those things will eventually catch up with you. Buttons, yes, buttons. Uh, no, the game didn't get corrupted. <laughs> Good joke, though. I get it. I get it. I get it. Because your copy was corrupted when you when you played it. How exactly did you set up Songbringer on Steam to only be pre-order and not actually live? It's not. It's not that way. Are you given that option? No. There's no way to do that on Steam. Uh, it's just, I do it straight through Humble, right? The only way to pre-order Songbringer is through Humble Bundle at, pre, at songbringer.preorder. Songbringer.com slash pre-order. So you buy the Humble version. It send, if you buy the $32 beta version, it immediately sends you a Steam key. And then you access the Steam beta. So there's no, there's no way to do pre-ordering. Oh, you just wanted to say it's coming soon? Oh, what, to get it to say coming soon on Steam, you just that's in the Steam options. It's one of the main things when you're getting it all set up is like, hey, when are you going to release this? Are you going to release it now or later? And you you should definitely put it in the future, put later, and then you put coming soon. Is are we on the right page? Or is, is that what? Yeah, it's probably just something you're, you're, yeah, it's a pretty, I guess it's, I, I don't remember where it was, because I mean, the Steam website is huge, right? There's so much stuff to click on and like change and edit with on Steam's back end, but it's got to be there, man. All right, so I want an L and an R button. What is your take on pricing? Because I'm not exactly sure what I should price the game at. Uh, that totally depends on your game and your and your audience. And I know you're you're talking about um your game, right? Uh, Arrhythmia. Is are you talking about Arrhythmia or something else you're working on? Because you started working on something else too, right? How did I price mine? I priced mine um, by doing the Kickstarter, and um, I was thinking about, you know, I just thought about the range, um, the range of what people would want to pay for my game, and I figured that for Songbringer, in particular, it's it's an indie game, so people aren't going to want to pay more than twenty bucks for it, you know. Actually, twenty bucks is high. And I've because I because I live stream five days a week or so, I talk to people all the time about the price of the game. And also I gotta communicate people with people directly doing the Kickstarter and talking about price then. 
and stuff. But lately, there was a lot of different live streams where I was talking about price. This was a few months ago, and um, the consensus that that we that from talking to people on the stream and things like that is that basically twenty dollars is just a tiny bit expensive for playing a game, even if it is top notch. Is even if it's a top notch indie game like Axiom Verge, for example, Axiom Verge. 20 bucks. I personally held off on buying Axiom Verge for a long time. Um, cause I always heard it was great. I heard it was an amazing game and it, and it definitely was definitely delivered on it. It was totally worth 20 bucks, but I just hesitated on purchasing Axiom Verge for a long time because it was just slightly on the expensive side for me. You know, 15 bucks is no problem to play for Pebe for a game. That's what most games are typically at 15 bucks for indie games, you know? It's, I don't know, it's almost like it's increasing, though. Like, prices are kind of on the rise a little bit, or at least developers seem like they're trying to charge more than 15 these days. So but the question is, could Songbringer actually be pulled off, sold at $20? I don't, I don't think it would do as well, personally. I think most people would expect to see Songbringer um, at more of, like, the $15 price range. So um, I, I'm going to keep it at $16, the way, exactly the way the Kickstarter was. The Kickstarter... It was um, $16 to basically get the game. And so you, for $16, you get the game. And then for $20, you also get the, um, the soundtrack. So there's still a $20 version. You know what I mean? Um, some games, you might want to charge a lot less than $16, though. I think if your game is not that... If, you, if, your game, if, your game, if you're not playing your game for more than... I don't know how to quantify it. But there's probably some hour mark like where your game your game can be played for i don't know four hours or eight hours or it's a 12 hour game or whatever this starts becoming more of a value right and so um sorry i'm not even reading i mean i was thinking around to eight to twelve great yeah i think it's probably a good price What's up, Arcane? Yeah, you'd pay you'd pay twenty bucks. Thanks, gaming artist. I'm, I'm glad you say that. Um, and I I don't know. I guess I, I do. You guys think that people are starting to pay more for indie games, or are is fifteen dollars still like the norm? Replayability is key in pricing. I don't know. I I'm not sure so much about replayability as just the playability. You know, how, how long is your game total if you play it from start to finish? I think that has something to say with how much your game is costs, but I don't know. There's a lot of metrics you could use, and, um, you know, I just think that one's kind of the most directly simple, right? It's just, okay, it's an eight-hour game. Here's, I don't know. But that's totally, it totally depends because for AAA games, they are in a totally different league, you know, and the, yeah, and that's a good point. The Witness was forty dollars, but w the Witness was almost more like a triple A game. In my arcane, my hundred opinion doesn't matter if it's indie or not. Some indies have twenty dollars, twenty plus, and publishers. Yeah, I know, right? Depends if the game is good, but fifteen bucks is optimal, right? That's the good. That's a good way to put it, right? It's not it's not really how much you think your game is worth. It's not really how much people would pay on the high end. It's more of what's the optimal price for your game, you know? And I think around 15 is usually the optimal price for most indie games, and I don't think Songbringer is an exception. <clears throat> thing about indie games is that they're more than just games they're like self-expression true art totally right that's why i love them too which is why i value them more than games like halo i do too i do too gaming artists i think that's a i think that's a that's a common sentiment amongst gamers you guys know the average age of a gamer is 30 super high was 25 and a fair amount of people complained it was wasn't long enough for the price oh it's interesting but are they no longer indie if they have a publisher? 
That's a very good question. Very good question. I think that line is quite blurred these days. Well, Indie should mean that it doesn't have a publisher, right? It should. It should. You can never have too many buttons. No, I'm joking. You could totally have too many buttons. But, but uh, there's not enough buttons in Song Ringer yet. There needs to be at least two more. There's so many items you can get. You got to be able to use more items at once. I usually base Indie on, uh, or not, on the amount of people. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to do it. I like that amount of people. Buttons are so cool! Yeah, man! Woo! Buttons! Would it be double A <laughs> or triple A? As a child, you just press every button you see? Really? That sounds fun. Beep boop, bop, 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 bop. Here, press this button, bop, 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 button. L R. Yay. All right. Other matter, if I want a controller for PC, which one should I get? So good, such a good question. Steam is releasing another new controller? Really? I don't know. I, this is a, such a good question, T. I don't know. I guess I, I, I got the Xbox controller. You could always get a PlayStation controller. The Xbox controller kind of seems like it's the most like well known, you know, well used. Most games seem to support it the most. But I could be wrong about that. I don't know. If, I could be totally wrong about that. So you know, either I guess either Xbox controllers. PlayStation controller or Steam controller up there is probably one of the, you know, most widely adaptable controllers. I don't know. Yeah, most games are designed for, it seems like they're designed for Xbox, first of all. Lime's got 360, the One, the PS3, the PS4, and the Steam controller. Whoa, man. You got them all. And is it nice? Is it nice having all those to test with? Yeah, I got to get more. I got to get at least a PlayStation 4 controller and at least a Steam controller. Maybe these should these black buttons here should look more like uh, the Xbox should be sort of more like square. Hey, what's up, Pedro? Wiz, I think you should look at the games that would be your main competitors: Splunky, Enter the Gungeon, Hyperlight Drifter. You won't be competing against shooters or puzzle games. Those three games I mentioned are the same genre and they're all priced at 15. So putting the higher than those very successful games can really hurt your game, of course. Hyperlight Drifter was 20 bucks though. Did they change that? Yeah, it's 20 bucks. Unless you paid 15. Is it cheaper over there in, in Europe?
Yes, Hyperlight Drifter was so good, right? Such a great game. Personally, I would have designed a few things a little differently as far as the gameplay goes. But artistically, my favorite game I've ever played. Such a, such a work of art, Hyperlight Drifter. Oh my god. I still think about some of the scenes that I that I witnessed in in Hyperlight Drifter. So amazing. Is there such a thing called the button fetish? Don't judge me. I'm not judging you, man. Case in point, Arcane. Case in point, right? You made that's a very good. We've made your point right here. Just slightly at right. It's not quite optimal. Not quite optimal. I'm just experimenting with maybe this being more square. Yeah, no, that just doesn't work. Well, I guess I could squish it a little. When programming meets self-expression, the ultimate form of art reveals itself. Ah, I like that. Nah, no, that's gonna look like crap too. Oh well. Let's keep these round buttons. The case oh the case in point is that Arcane wouldn't have pay, wouldn't pay fifteen or twenty bucks for a game and he didn't buy Hyperlight Drifter because it was twenty bucks. It's just like it's just you know it's 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 enough of a price that it makes you hesitate before buying. You know. Arcade. <laughs> How do you make them look so shiny? You know, just brighter, brighter pixels. Highlighty pixels. They're very highlighty pixels. Oh, it was just that you didn't know what case in point meant. Oh, sorry, Deke. Sorry. Language difference. Language difference. I didn't know. All right, all right. Now you know. Now you know, and now I know that you know. We both know things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm do these PlayStation ones too. I need some caffeine about how to headbang onto into my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh no, man, why? Why? Except the guy over there with the green shirt. Uh, no, I have not been to PAX. No. And yeah, I would I would love to go to more events, but uh, it's really difficult as a solo developer to find the time, first of all, to go to more than one event a year even. And secondly, the money to be able to go to these things. I just, I just can't afford to go to PAX or or E3 or anything like that and show off my game. It's just way more expensive than it, it seems. Like probably for me to even show Songbringer at one of the, at PAX, it costs probably at least five grand, if not 10 grand for me to do that. And that's like a, almost, that's half a year's worth of development for me. I can't go spending half a year's worth of development until I become an actually successful game developer. One year, one of these years, maybe I will be a successful game developer. Hopefully Songbringer makes me a successful game developer. We shall see. But until then, I'll just be a, a who I am. Uh. Right, we're ready to do this. Button L. I hope so, I hope I'm successful. It would be really nice to develop the next game. I'd like to be able to develop the next game in the Songbringer series without worrying about when I have to release it. Songbringer, I have to release by a certain date um, because I don't have any more funds. You know, I have to keep, I have to call it, you know, this has got to be it for Songbringer at some point because of money. And I hope that I make enough money that I can make the next game and make it as long as I want and make it as dope as I want before I have to release it, you know? Well, I make separate buttons for the 360 and the Xbox One. They have slightly different shapes and colors. No, I won't. I'm going to keep it with keep it old school with the 360. Or maybe I'll go new school and do the the one. This is this is 360-ish. What was I doing before I started working on my game? Um, I was doing some web development. I had made a game before that. It's called Hero Bash, and it failed to make any money, and it pretty much crushed me as a as a game developer. And uh, yeah. It was really, really hard, but I learned a very, very important lesson from it all. And going into Songbringer, I changed my complete outlook and decided that I needed to build a, a fan base for the game every day. Every single day of developing Songbringer, I had to put myself in some kind of marketing mode and be building a following and building a fan base for the game. Because you can't just make a game for years. This is what, ha this is what we did. Me, my friend and I... We made this game called Hero Bash. It's an online, real-time, multiplayer game. It was a MOBA, basically. 
for iOS, and it took us two years to make full time. Both of us spending our credit card money and our savings and things like that failed to make any money. We made like twenty bucks a month. Once we were done, we spent five grand of our own money marketing. And um, my my biggest lesson from all that was that basically you need to build a following for your game because the five thousand dollars we tried to throw at marketing after we were done making our game didn't work at all because we didn't have a following. You know, you can't just hire PR at the end of your project and hope that it'll work. The new editor? What's this? What what editor is that? And uh, for anybody that's curious, I did write an entire article on Gama Sutra about this. Um, if you just search, search Gama Sutra for Nathaniel Weiss, or or you search Gama Sutra, um, the cure for indie game failure, that's this is a whole article about how to how to solve this problem in game development, how to guarantee, not guarantee, but how to how to show that a game is likely to succeed or not. Thanks, gaming artist. Oh, that's how you're making levels in Project Rhythmia? Oh, sweet, Lime. That's nice. And it's going to work with Steam Workshop? Sweet, dude. That's great. Okay, I think these buttons are good enough for now. Let me make sure that these are all lined up. Yeah, we're good to go. Let's export this and throw this in the game. And we'll have six buttons today, right now. Six buttons instead of four. I can't even freaking ima imagine what's going to happen. Oh my god. The universe might implode, you guys. What's up, Salad Donks? We're good, man. How are you doing? Lime Studios is tired. What you, what you tired for, Lime Studios? Add all the buttons, thousands of buttons. We need all the buttons in the world. We need them collected, sorted, and put in different piles so that we can put them all in. All user slices. Yes. I'm so glad I clicked that. All right. We've got these new buttons um, in game scene. We're going to hook these buttons up. L and R. We all have. We all have icons. L R. I'm never gonna do L two and L and R two though. I can. The most I can go is 16 bit controller style. HUD button P S L. This was originally intended to be a an 8 bit style game. You're only gonna have four directions of movement and two buttons. But. The game's a lot funner with more buttons, so that plan got chucked. We got a new plan now. You aced your last final today? You got a 4.0? Holy crap, that's amazing, dude. Man, personally, my, my personal story as far as grade point averages go, I, I did really well in high school, got 4.0s. And then uh, I went to college and I was barely able to get it like a 2.5. It's tough stuff, man. It's, it's so tough. All right, I do believe we're all set up to have these buttons in there now. And really the last touch is to go change the KNUM equipables. I did some prep work last night on all this. I got all the, the games, so it should it should allow this right here. If I just go add these two types of input here, it's gonna change the number of equipables to six, and it, everything else in the whole game engine should work okay this way. We'll see if this works or not. You're pretty happy. Yeah, you weren't expecting it with your chem final, huh? Chem two. Gosh, chem, chemistry is hard, right? 
my hardest thing was physics. Either that or my teacher was just really difficult in college. I was like, I could not for the life of me get more than like a, a C on my grades in physics. And I thought I was good at math and that kind of stuff. I did all right in calculus. I think I got like I think I got like B's in calculus or something like that. The only thing I ever got A's in was programming. Physics are cool, right? The chem prop was really tough. Oh wow, yeah. Nice, dude. Sound dogs. I'm impressed, dude. I'm very impressed. Oh, you took a test this morning. Oh, that's why you're tired? CMPS. What's CMPS? Calculus is love. Do you guys think the universe is going to implode now that I've added two more buttons to the game? Hey, nothing's gone. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. There's six buttons I could use down there. The universe is not imploded. Let's see if I can even map them. What are the buttons even set to? I think it's that button. No, oh, oh, those are my speed. Uh, O P? Is it O? Just hmm. what do I got bindings set to bindings. Songbringer officially the case of the big crunch. What's that? The big crunch. Oh, it's computer science meta section for algorithms. Wow. Meta section for algorithms. Sounds heady. Okay, so it's like what button is eight and which one's nine? Input, okay, button. Oh, here they are. Here they are. This is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine are L and R. All right. Eight and nine, they're set to I and O. Yeah, I and O. Oh, uh, I guess I just, I don't know if, I, if this works yet. Well, let's start at the beginning. Load game. Load game um, is where it's going to like load what things are equipped. Let's see if that's, we can get that working. Yeah, so this should work. We've got I is less than num equipable, so it should be loading things. Let's go to the save. And I'll add some more equipment text here, like L. Oh, wait a minute. How does it even know that L is a get equipable car? Here we go. Aha, aha, here's the problem. That get equipable car was not ready for this LNR madness. What did I go to school for? Um, no, it wasn't it wasn't computer science. I went to a technical institute, not a technical institute, it's I guess it's it's yeah, Oregon in, yeah, it was I guess it was technically an institute. It was, it was the Oregon Institute of Technology, and our degree for software was um Was it software engineering technology? I think it was called software engineering technology. It was basically like a subset of computer science focusing more on software. Because our, our college at that time had a, a big hardware division as well as a software division. So they kind of made it, uh, you know, they made it friendly for both types of, both types of geeks. So if i is greater than, dude, this is wrong. Let's just make this greater than or equal to kx. It's a lot clearer, isn't it not? And this is greater than or equal to kl. And this is going to be l. Oh, this is, okay, this is wrong, 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 wrong. If i is kl, return l. I is KR, return R. And other than this, we could just do, wait, no, wait, wait, wait. This could be wrong too.
but it won't. But in the future, would it? Would in the future, would it? It might. Yeah, let's turn this all into a switch. Switch I. A, B, X, Y, L, R. All right, now this, this method is more future-proof. Yay, future-proofing. Yes, future-proofing. Oh, yeah. All y'all programmers in the whole world rejoice for future-proofing. Better, 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 better. Return zero if it doesn't know what it found. A, A, B, B, X, X, Y, Y, L, L, R, R. Okay, now, now let's see if it can load or say, well, load, I guess, load, load should be the thing. Let's try and load into that, the blink. Let's put the blink as L. Future-proof everything. I know, the impossible battle. Uh, I, oh, it worked. Oh, and it also changed the time so that the game is running faster. Oh my god, the game is running so fast. Whoa. Uh, what time am I at? Oh, is it 11 times the speed? Wow. Now we're down to 0.2 times the speed. Okay, enough of this. Enough of this. I had the same thing bound for my L key and my speed up key so let's change those there is nothing better <laughs> the sun becomes a strobe light let's, uh, let's do this let's see how, how how fast can we get the game going I'm kind of nervous about this 1.6, 2.6, 4.2. Every time I do it, it's he's blinking too. Whoa! Look at him shaking his head. What are we at? 40? 76? It like instantly pauses because the systems are running so fast. 123? Sanic! Sanic, help me, Sanic. How do you go so fast? How do you go so fast and still live? 199? I think it's, I think 199 is like the it. I think we just crashed it. Whoa, 843. No way. And it's something just works first the right time. I know, right? You just don't even trust it. You're like, what? If this works on the first try? This can't, this can't be right. Okay, I think 843 was the top there, but it really wasn't running at 843 that much. I think it was still running at 100. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> it's like somehow crashed the game, but or not crashed the game, but it just somehow exited the game. And then it's, now it's running the menu at like 100. 800 speed or something? What is this? Uh, uh, uh. Thanks, Rebecca. 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 That was me trying to make the motor noise. Okay, okay. This is so fun, but like, we can't really do this forever, can we? Okay, well, we know the game can run at about a hundred times the speed and still be running. That's interesting. But I would still like to rebind these keys so I don't accidentally do that again. Uh, how about X and S? Well, let's see. I've got these set up. That's G, F. I think V and C would be good ones for, for 
my other two items. We'll go C and V. My laptop's got the, the fan running now. So it, it was doing something there for sure. It was definitely eating up some CPU cycles, at least. Okay, we're here, we're, we're, done. we're working on Songbringer, and today I'm working on having adding two buttons to the game. I got L and R now buttons, so I should be able to, yes. I'm pressing the C key now. And it does show that too, on the bottom of the screen we got the C key visible. And I don't have the sword right now. Oh, because I was trying to test that other thing. Yeah, so let's uh let's get the player the sword. This just looks weird. That empty spot. We'll equip that. And the next thing I want to do is be able to equip something to R. Right now there's nothing on R. If I'd like there to be. So there's something wrong with the the way the equipping code works. It's like still locked to the old old four somehow. Mm. Well, let's see. If I press the V key, mm. see it's not even showing me that C is a color. Oh, it's got its colors wrong too. All right. Well, it's a few few things to work on here to get the game running. Uh, but let's start with uh, let's let's equip meditation to V. Yeah, that doesn't work. So okay. Well, let's figure out why. Oh wait, but does it save Blink? If I go and s just save the game, or if I change if I change one thing, like maybe I'll uh, unequip bombs. Save the game. Let's see if it saves the... Yeah, it still saved Blink. Very good. Okay, so good. I was basically looking at uh, at the save game function here. Save game. GK, save game. Save game, save equip. Yeah, here it is. So we loop over all the equipables, get the equipable car, save it, blah, blah, blah. Yes. That code's good. So we got load game, save game, both those are confirmed to be working with all six items. Um, next thing is to go to phase gear where we can equip stuff. That's that the, the basically the inventory menu. So phase gear, it's gotta be something where it's not allowing the sixth row or whatever. Oh, well, there's a function in here, like where it equips items. Equip item. I think it's the function called equip item. Checking his valid equip index. That's all right. Get the current selection. Hmm. Oh, I want to get rid of that. Can equip. Oh, I got an idea. I got an idea. I'm going to set a breakpoint here. We'll figure out what's going on by just stepping through it. Like a normal programmer. Alright, so I want to equip meditation to V. Nothing happens. Well, no wonder. What, what's happening when I do that then? 
Oh, maybe I'm not even checking the buttons L and R. That'd make total sense. Here we go, tick. Yes, this is it. Input did release button X, equip index X. This should immediately be a for loop. Equip index is less than K button. Actually, no. Equip index. Equip index is less than K num equipables. Equip index plus plus. We just started out this all off at equip index zero. And here we'll just go if constants is valid equip index, equip index. So now we can go ahead and turn the equip index into whatever we want. And it'll be fine. If Eat input did release button K button A plus equip index. And I'm not sure if that needs to be in. Oh, yeah, that works. Oh, that's button index. Oh, button index. Yeah, button index A, B, X, Y, L, R. Yeah, these are fine. They're all in order. And in the same order as K, A, K, B. Etc. Now it's going to maybe recompile everything because I just put that node in there. But let's get that recompiling now. <clears throat> if so, break. That's all we do. Break. All right, so I'll set a breakpoint there. Well, no. Yeah, I'm going to do that right now. Set a breakpoint here, just to make sure that it's not actually getting in there. Um, when there's no button being pressed. Almost done, Rico. Oh, yeah, we're done, finally. It's always really slow to recompile when I'm streaming because uh, my computer is already doing a lot. So it takes way longer than I'm, when I'm normally developing. Okay, so, all right, yeah, we got a breakpoint there. It should be, equip index should be maxed out six, right? And that means it's not going to be a valid equip index, so no, it's not going to get in there. So I can delete this breakpoint and confirm that. Set another breakpoint here. I should get this far when I try and map something. We map the meditation of V. Good. Yes, this time we're getting it. Let's go step into this method. If equip item, still valid. It's not the blank. It's not equipable to A. We can equip it. This is a function I should check real quick though. Is there anything to do with buttons? No, no, okay, this, this is mostly just, this is just items and quantities and area. We're not crafting that item. It goes and unequips it if it's already equipped to something else. Sets up its unselect mappings, blah, 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 blah. We should be good. And yeah, now it's equipped. It's in my equip index. We should be good to go. Let's see if it works. 
It's visible! It's there! Alright, it's working. I'm, I'm pressing the V key. It's, it's uh, mapped it to V. I press it again and unmaps it. I can also do C. Yeah, C works just fine. So let's do um, let's do C now to you know C will be the meditate, V will be the blink. Let's turn back on bombs to yeah S top hat should be D cactus G. There we go. Full complement of items. We we'll save the game and make sure that all wrote to disc just fine. Yeah, good. Sword bomb top pass cactus meditate was L. R was blink, yeah. Killer. This is awesome, dude. This is so awesome. Alright, so there's uh whoa, what's up, Wuggy? How's it going, man? Alright, so let's test out Oh, I know there's a bug still in the graphical part of it all. See at the top we got we got all six buttons here, but it's not the colors are all lined up wrong. The colors are like they go yellow, red, blue, orange, but they're just too off. they the positions are just wrong. So it's just where it puts those mapping mapping uh, uh Mapping sprites, mapping sprites, mapping sprites. Where is its position? Ah. 232 plus 30 times I. If we want to take this down to 170. And let's see if there's anything else to do with that. Mapping. index set position P oh right there's mappings top and then there's mappings yeah this looks like that's we got the that should be set up right now all it was was just that position was wrong the initial position of the mappings top Oh man, this is going to be really nice to be able to play the game with another two buttons because there's so many items now that you just need to be able to have two more. Like, once you get the blink orb, it's really nice to be able to use the blink orb with the blink orb button and with already having like more items already on there. Yeah, it worked. Alright, so if I go turn off that mapping, maybe I want to map that to G. Yeah. I want this one to be yellow. Cool, it's working. So I just the, the only problem is that the colors are wrong for these other two, and maybe I should just make them white instead of what they are now. They're like black. What six buttons? I know you remember when there was only two, right? I was just saying that at the beginning of this stream, this game was meant to be an eight-bit style game at first, and it just became more 16-bit every day. And today, it doesn't really make any sense for the game to be 8-bit anymore. Maybe one of these days I'll go back and write an actual 8-bit game. I would like to do that, I think. You need There needs to be a minimalist mode. Okay. Minimalist mode. You only get two buttons. You can only go in four directions. You could still play the whole game. It just wouldn't be... Uh, you just wouldn't be, you just didn't have to move in four directions only, and there would only be two buttons you could use at once. I like it. You want that? It sounds good. That sounds good to add to the game. Minimalist mode. Where are these things getting their color from? Mapping. Oh, here it is. K equipable colors. Well, no wonder. These are black. Let's make them white to start with. Let's see what white looks like, or gray, maybe. O X F F F F F F. Tiny twenty six hundred mode. You get one button and only four colors. Mm. 
All right, yeah. So now it's a, a brighter color. But you can't tell them apart because one's white and the other's white. So what other button colors should I use? I mean, this is this is going with the Xbox button coloring scheme: yellow, orange, green, or yellow, orange, blue, red. I guess we could do green as a color and maybe purple. Green and purple. Why not, man? Let's do some green and purple. Oh, I guess the yeah, first one is green. Oh. I thought that was yellow. But why is it why is it almost yellow itself? It's, all, it's kind of an orange color. So cyan is available and purple is available. Those are really the only two colors we have. Okay, cyan it is. Hue. Only want to change the hue here. Do like that. These are dark. These are really dark colors. It it can only display four colors at a time. Okay, I might brighten all these colors up. Purple. This is kind of crazy having the whole bottom row full of items, but it feels right almost. I like it. And we got this nice little fade out that goes on, cleans up the HUD. Hey, that is nice having that, that cyan color that works. V? Why is V not visible? This one's not visible. What happened here? Oh, now it's visible. Hey, wait a minute, the story system just kicked in all of a sudden. Oh, because I reset. It's not showing the purple color at first. Why is that? It's like it's there. Okay, while I'm doing this, I'm gonna brighten these colors up a bit. Oh, 120 colors on the whole screen, but only four on a particular line. So, man, can you believe all the restrictions? Sixty nine? How about sixty nine brightness? Eh? You, I, I trust the guy in the random forum. Sure, guy. I believe you, guy. Oh, that one was already was sixty nine. This one's now 79. This one's nice and bright already. Let's go max brightness, max brightness. This one is coming really dark, but it worked all right, it seemed like. All the games look like it's true, right? That's I believe him, man. I believe him too. Uh, 
Oh yeah, these colors do look better brighter. For sure. Hell, I might even go max brightness. I wonder why it's fading out too. It should be fading out. <laughs> yes, let me do this too. Let me do this too. Pitfall! Was this pole position? Frogger? Frogger! Whoa, is this Star Wars? Wait, wait, check this out. Our, 20, our Atari 2600 games that don't suck. Metal Jesus, I'm back. It's Metal Jesus! Heck yeah, I think I might have checked this out later. It seems like a pretty cool video to watch. Okay, back to the quest of six buttons! We got a problem because it's, uh, well first of all, I'm gonna, bright I'm gonna max these brightnesses out. These are good. These are good, brighter. Actually, let's do one test first. I'm gonna do super bright green, see if that's too much. And then I'll work on getting this last equip index. Something weird is with the, the purple. Purple is not equipping right, or it's not showing right at first. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's fine. A nice bright green background actually makes it clearer the fact that it's, it's equipped. If you're drawing that conclusion. Okay, let's max all these out. I like that. Looks like this one already is. Yep. This one's close. Oh, not as close as I thought. B, three, Maximal, Maximilian. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. The only problem is just the purple. Why is the purple not visible at first? Let's get back to Flux. Mappings. Here's where it's creating all the mappings. Sets the opacity to one for each one and then runs a, a fade in. It does appear that it's running the, the fade in for each one of those. Is it the wait, is it the mappings top or the mappings? Ooh, good question. I gotta run again, see what... It might have been the top or it might have been the bottom. Okay, the top one has the purple up there. The V is per perfectly fine. Very nice and purpley up there. But it's not purple right here. Should be purple. Oh, is it just the blink orb? Could be the just blink orb related. What if I set it to this bio detector? Save my game. Run it again. Oh, yep, there it is. That's the problem. 
It's just not showing the initial mapping for the blink orb. So maybe I had some other kind of bug in there. So what if I set the blink orb to G? Yeah, see, even the G doesn't work. Oh. So it had nothing to do with the mappings. It was just the fact that the blink orb is special and how it equips it and stuff. And there's really only one place where it's... I think there's only one place. Here, this equip item thing. This is kind of weird. It's probably because the blink orb is special and it can get maxed in a different way than the other items. Mm. Oh yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It's probably just to do with the other blink I was just looking at this here, this bit of blink. I don't know what it, I don't know exactly what it's doing, so I'm gonna go ahead and set my breakpoint here for the is blink. Let's see, it's gonna. I have. I think I have max. Yeah, I max this blink orb because I have all three of them. Let me check that. Blink, but blink. Yeah, I got all three blinks. So when I get in here, the first one it's going to find is the first one, of course. And it's going to say, my next key... Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. The next key should be 38, right? Blink plus blink times minus 1. So I... 37... Oh, yeah, 37, and then it gets inked to 38. So the quantity is the number of blinks I have. Should be... Oh. Yeah, three blinks. Q is greater than or equal to... Item becomes the last blink orb. So our item gets currently K item blink, and it should become K item blink three. Yep, blink three. Okay. So why is the mapping not getting applied? Index, item size. I know this item is getting created just fine. I know the item's there. It's visible. It's not a key or anything. But here's where it should map. Oh, there it is. That's exactly what's going on. We changed we changed the item before we map before we showed the mapping. Okay. So we need an original item variable. So if E gear equip equip index equals original item. See if 
it worked. Yes, it worked! Bam! Okay, so I'm gonna get my normal setup. This is what I like to have. I like to have the cactus as my G. That would be the Y key for most people. Um, and then I want the blink orb as the R button. And we'll keep meditate as L. Okay, I'm gonna save my settings as they are. I'm gonna reload everything. We should have everything to be able to use. Just fine. Okay, so I got meditate should be C. Great. Meditation works fine. Blink orb is V. Yeah. Or I can double tap. G is the cactus. There's the bomb, top hat, sword. Yeah, it's sweet! And it's actually pretty convenient to play with the V key down here. I'm playing with Vim keys, that's why my keys are so weird. I'm using Vim keys, which are J is your down key, K is your up key. J, K. Those are your up, down. And then H is your left, and L is your R. And then, so basically I can keep my hands on the home row key, or on the home row, for most of playing song right here. Alright, yeah! You know what? I think I, I think this is done! We have six buttons in the game. Cactus! Six buttons! This is the time for rejoicing! Alright, well, yeah. Let's check it in. Good stuff. Very good stuff going on here today. I approve of this stuff that's going on. I give it I give it my stamp of approval. I win a gold star today. Let me add these little buttons I drew. Oh, let's see if it works with the controller, yeah. Let's make that last little bit of yeah confirmation. Unplug that. Plug this in. You guys should see the cord madness going on here. It's, it's hilarious. All right, let's make sure that the Xbox controller works and it displays the button correct and all that. Oh, and you know, it'd be nice to pick up an item. Yeah, we got L and R. Sweet. Yes. Oh, that's so awesome. You can finally use the L and R buttons. Oh, this is gonna be so great for having the bleak orb bound to a different key. Whatever you want it to be. Oh yeah. Alright, so one last check. I wanna make make my save game so that I have one open slot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure it can apply, it can auto equip. So meditate. Let's make meditate. Y. R is, L is blink, and I'll get the cactus. Let's say I have no cactuses. I'm gonna buy a cactus, and it should fill up my my R button with the cactus automatically, because I got a free slot there. All right, so it didn't work. It means it's just not auto equipping. All right. Yeah. Okay. So auto equip. Why doesn't auto equip work? Auto equip item. Oh, we just did these manual slots this way. Oh, in in order of whatever kind of favor, or whatever. Okay, whatever. K L, K R. This time, this time, once again, we have a free slot, the V key, or the R key. 
buying the cactus. Yes, it auto-equipped it to R for me! Oh, I would like to be able to use R to get out of this button, this dial. Oh, no, actually, maybe not. Yeah, no, I want to be able to use R to get out of there. Yes, but good, now this is working. Alright, okay, the last bit, I think, is going to be here in Constance. Oh, that's CPP. Yes, I'm so glad I made it at CPP. Ah, uh, hey, button's equipable. These are now buttons L and R. These guys count. Because I watched my friend play, and I noticed that he, when I got, when he got the items, he tried to press the actual button that it was telling you to, that it, how to use it to get out of just the item dialog, like, like this right here. He got an item, he, he tried to press the R key right here. He's like, okay, R, I wanna use it. I wanna use it right now. But you know, I had originally just made it so you could only press the A button to get out of here. So now I should be able to press the R button to it will just leave. The, yes, good. Good. Excellent! I think this is good enough for initial committed. For the initial commit. We're all good. Can always improve this all later. Probably will be need to be some little tweaks here and there to make this all run correctly in every single case, but yes. I'll get there eventually. What? Get nothing is not a command? Come on. Get add. Get add. Get status. Boom. Ready to check this in? We added two equipable colors, brightened up all the existing colors. We got L, R, are now buttons. Properly applies the mapping sprites in the gear screen. Does the original item fix for the blink orb. Equip index setting right there is now based on the array rather than manually setting them, which was just wrong. The get equipable car function is now a little more future proof. Um, in case those orders change, it won't change those letters. And now we got the L and R button graphics for the Xbox and the PlayStation controller. And what's this last one? Gear component? Oh, it's auto, it can auto equip those buttons. Oh, and story system doesn't need it to be checked in that way. So I can undo those. Undo, undo, and check the diff one more time. We shouldn't have that story system. Good. Yes, check it in, check it in. Oh, I'm actually, let me just add to the change log while I do this. Songbringer change log. All right, starting off version 0.8.2 now. I'm not sure what this one will be called or when it will come out. So start like like that. What's well, a new feature? You can you can now use. L and R buttons can now be can be used to equip items. That ask you you like this? This is custom, man. I took some I took I took I started with the graffiti art font online, but then I customed it out. I made it 3D. I added this whole top row and stuff and played with the dots and stuff like that, but yeah, but this, I think I started with some ASCII art text generator online, so yeah, it's not all, it's not all my ASCII art, but kind of custom, kind of custom a little bit, a little customness. Eleanor. Thanks, Aladonks.
Alan R. Buttons Equipable! Badass. All right, guys. Well, um, I gotta call. I gotta call it short on today's stream. I know it's probably not even two hours yet, but but man, Wizard Food needs some good rest. Wizard Food worked really hard this weekend. I was up two two nights this weekend, all nighters. I was up till eight a.m. Monday morning. So I'm still a little bit tired. I'm gonna get my rest while I can. So appreciate y'all. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll come back with some more stuff later. Yeah, Lime, Sao Dong, see, Boogie. We'll see you guys. Have a great day. Yes. Thanks, Lime. You too, man. Serious Creeper, no way. What's up, Serious Creeper? Oh, I gotta say hi. How you doing, man? Hope you've been good, man. Hope you've been good, Serious Creeper. Doing all right? Sweet, man. Yeah, cool. Right on. Well, yeah, next time next time you're around, we'll, we'll catch up more. Talk about more how, how you've been and stuff. So... Appreciate it. All right, so yeah, we'll catch you guys later.